close-up look at all your Concho Valley High School football, this is Inside the Game, sponsored by Mitchell Automotive Group. Welcome to Inside the Game. I'm Jaden Hart. It's week eight of the Texas high school football season. All of our Concho Valley teams have now officially started district, and that means the return of the Little Southwest Conference in the UIL's 100th year. Born in 1951, it's the closest the t district has been since 2012 to its original core of Central, Abilene, and the two Midland and Odessa schools, minus Abilene, Cooper, and Big Springs, that all been together. The district embodies West Texas and is a staple of high school football. Fittingly, tonight, two of the district's most historic rivalries took center stage. Central versus Abilene High and Midland Lee versus Permian. We start, obviously, with the Bobcats and their matchup with the Eagles on that on the this one dates back to 1910 the 96 meeting between these two schools both still looking for their first wins of the season setting the mood for a good old-fashioned night of high school football in West Texas Central won the last four years trying to make it five in a row in the series the first time since the 90s first quarter after a uh, Eagles field goal Malachi Brown hits Weston Hill in the end zone Bobcats take a 7-3 lead. Let's go to later on in the quarter, and Central's going to strike again. Brown dropping back to pass, hits his brother, not his brother, but Wesson's brother. That's Tyler Hill, the future quarterback, scoring for the Bobcats to give them a 14-3 lead. And we'll move on into the second quarter. Abilene in the red zone. Wyatt McDougal gets the toss and lunges in for six. Eagles down at 14 to nine after the failed two-point conversion. Now under a minute left in the half. Central up 10, looking for more. That's Seth Levette coming down with it. Nothing but the end zone in front of him. That extended Central's lead 29 to 12 going into halftime. And the Bobcats keep it, or kept it going in the second half for their first win of the season, 53 to 32. Here's our Rachel Turnox on the Bobcats win. Yeah, Jaden Central just doing everything right tonight, really cleaning up a lot of the mistakes that they made the first three weeks, turning the ball over, some self-inflicted wounds of penalties. They just really cleaned up their game tonight. Not a lot of mistakes. They were the ones actually committing the turnovers. They had an interception. They also recovered a fumble. And then offensively, they just completely dominated, especially coming out in the second half whenever they quickly, quickly scored courtesy of Weston Hill, which, by the way, he was just, he was, the, he was one of the guys tonight, one of the many guys tonight that Malachi Brown went to. He had six catches for 114 yards and two touchdowns. His brother, Tyler Hill, five catches for 72 yards and one touchdown. Both the Hill brothers just really stepping up. That's very good to see. The Central went into the break at 29 to 12 was the lead and then just coming out and winning this one tonight 53 to 32. So very good for the Bobcats getting their first win tonight after starting out the season 0 and 3 but more importantly the fact that this was a district game as head coach Brent Davis has said multiple times in his press conference no matter what happened their first three weeks they will be a better football team when they start district play and guess what they have they improved last week against A&M consolidated even though that was a loss they did see much improvement last week on the road and the fact that they just beat Abilene High tonight a huge victory for them as they just keep rolling against the Eagles they beat them the last four years, now make this the fifth straight year. So they will have a big road test for their first district road game. But you know what? They've been road warriors this season as their first three weeks were road games. So they'll hit the road to friendship, friendship beating Midland High tonight. So that will be a exciting game for the Bobcats to head up to friendship to face the Tigers. But of course, a huge win for Central tonight with their Home opener and district opener in front of the Bobcat fans. Reporting from San Angelo Stadium, I'm Rachel Turnock. Jaden, back to you. This update is sponsored by Bug Express. 63rd meeting between Midland Lee and Permian. The per Panthers took down the Rebels last year. Could they do it again? First play. Harper Terry drops back to pass for his first one of the night and throws a deep one to Taryn Lemieux for the touchdown, and Permian is up 7-0. The fans at Ratliff loving that. 
Second quarter now, still 7-0. to zero. McKaylin Young with a wildcat play, and it looks like he scored. The refs say he did. Coach Jeff Ellison says no, but the refs ultimately win. Coach 7-7 seven, seven, tied game. Next Panther possession, that's Lucas Salazar, and he will score. Panthers up 13-7, to seven. and tonight Permian is going to beat Midland Lee for the second straight year, 55-44, making this district a whole lot interesting. Third game in District 26A tonight, Friendship versus Midland High, and like Rachel said earlier, the Tech Tigers came away with a win in this one, 37-23. Odessa High was the lone team on the bye for the district this week. It was hard to find another game with a level of implications quite like this one. Two top 10 teams with a district title more than likely on the wall line. Wall has won nine straight district titles and are the favorites to claim its 10th this season. But standing in their way is one of the hottest teams in 3A Division I right now. Jim Ned is riding a four-game winning streak with wins over Cisco and Hallettsville. And they'd still be undefeated if it weren't for a last-minute score by Ballinger in Week 1. Last time these two met, it lived up to the billing. The Hawks walking away with a 14-7 victory. Could Wall go back into a hostile crowd in Tuscola and pull off their seventh straight against the Indians? Well, let's find out. This game, like I said, big district implications. First possession for Jim Ned. Quarterback Tate Yardley to Jock Henderson deep down the left sideline for a big gain. And then a few plays later, a guy that's going to be known for Jim Ned for the years to come, Xavier Weishurt, punching his way into the end zone. And Jim Ned is on the board at first. They lead 7-0. Wall on the goal line now. Quarterback Drew Morrison fakes the handoff, takes it in for himself. We've seen that plenty of times this season. The Hawks even things up at seven apiece. Early in the second quarter now, it's Jim Nett's turn again. They call a direct snap to Weishurt, who buries it into the end zone, swinging the momentum back in Jim Nett's favor. And they would go on to beat the Hawks. A huge win for the Indians. Bit of a setback for the Hawks tonight. 28 to eight is the final. So let's look at the updated 3-3A standings. Clyde right now, at the top with Jim Ned, they had a win technically because TLCA had to forfeit their game earlier this week. Early took down Breckenridge for their first win in district. And as for Wall, the Hawks will try to turn things around next week back at Hawk Stadium against Breckenridge. So the Central Bobcats getting that first win of the season in the next three games. Looking good if you're a Central fan because that will be a three-game stretch with Friendship, Odessa, and Midland. Teams the Bobcats should probably beat setting up that all-important rivalry at San Angelo Stadium against the Permian Panthers. But we're just getting started on Inside the Game. Coming up, we'll take a look at Lakeview's district opener last night. And how our 2-3A Division two teams did. Sonoran Brady, Grape Creek, and Ballinger. That right after this. Hi, I'm Mike with MGB, Mike's Gold Buyers. Gold and silver prices are terrific, which means more money for your gold, silver, and diamonds. Come to MGB and you'll say, I sold gold and I like Mike. On Avenue in by Angelo State. For more than 28 years, Floyd C. Pettit Insurance has been proud to serve families and communities throughout West Texas with the insurance services needed to protect you in good times and bad. And right now, it's an uncertain time, but we're ready for it. You can continue to count on us for your insurance needs and to help you feel safe and prepared for whatever comes next. We've been lucky to become part of many of your families, and it's with that level of care that we're committed to serving you and the community we love so much. Floyd C. Pettit Insurance. Help, help, I'm stuck. Help! Grandma's stuck in the bathroom. Oh no, we need to call Contra Valley Foundation Repair. When a foundation fails, it places your family at risk. Stuck doors, cracked sheetrock, and broken windows can all be signs of foundation failure. Contra Valley Foundation Repair's experience and knowledge can effectively support and stabilize your home. With Contra Valley Foundation Repair, you'll know you're getting a great value at a competitive price. Thank you, Contra Valley Foundation Repair, for saving the day. Contra Valley Foundation Repair. Ready to kick a ratty old sofa to the curb? Yep, this one. Well, right now you can get a look you love and save big during the home makeover sale at Furniture Row. 
Find sale prices on every sofa, every dining table, and every bed. And the more you buy, the more you save. Save 100 bucks on every 1000 you spend, plus five years, no interest, and free shipping. Honey, we're going to Furniture Row! The home makeover sale, on now at Furniture Row. For the latest news, or to unwind with some engaging conversations about sports, entertainment, and everything in between, go to ConchoValleyHomePage.com forward slash live and check out our webcasts. We're back after two weeks on the road traveling to far west Texas and the Panhandle. The Lakeview Chiefs were back at home last night for their District 4 2A Division I opener against Fort Stockton. The Chiefs entered the night with their best record throughout seven games since 2008, sitting at 4 and 3, while the Panthers were on a five game losing streak and had only scored 54 points in the last four games. 15th straight year. These two teams have played. Both have won seven times since 2006. First quarter, Fort Stockton in the red zone. That's Pedro Vasquez maneuvering his way through the Chiefs' defense for a touchdown. Made it 8-0 to zero after a two-point conversion. Later in the quarter, Lakeview on the board. They're down 14-0. That's Albert Rodriguez, who everyone knows at this point. Made it 14 to 7. Next, Fort Stockton possession. That's Dominique Aguilar who slanged it out to Jaylee Ibarra. Touchdown for the Panthers. That made it 20 to 7. Second quarter now, Rodriguez gets the pass off before the rush gets to him. And Tristan Franklin comes down with it for 6. The Chiefs trail 26 to 14 at that point. But Fort Stockton took advantage of several late U miscues. Led 50 to 14 at the half, and they go on to win 65 to 28. And then checking out the other two teams in 4A, or 2 4A, Andrews is the district favors, and they took care of a much improved Big Spring squad, 56 to 35. Mustangs come to San Angelo Stadium next week to face Lakeview. Let's move over to District 2 3A Division 2, starting with Brady hosting Sonora. Brady, first district game of the year, first quarter. Broncos are going to strike first on the goal line. They hand it off to Hunter O'Bannon, who pounds his way in for the touchdown. It's 8-0 after a two-point conversion. Then on the next possession, O'Bannon showed his strength on that last play. But how fast is he? Well, that's the answer. Turning on the Jets and going into the end zone for another two-point conversion and a 16-0 lead for Sonora. Brady's offense awoke in the second quarter, however. Hayden Baronet floats it up to Parker Leonard, the senior, getting a big catch for the Bulldogs. That was their first score of the game, and Sonora would ultimately cruise in this one. They win 44-13. to Let's jump over to Ballinger. They're hosting Grape Creek. Ballinger, the district favorites, started hot last week here. Bearcats change. Carter Arnett passes it to Gavin Martinez. And the Bearcats take a 6-0 lead. They missed an extra point. Now in the second quarter, third and goal for the Bearcats. Tyler Vaughn takes the snap over. Check that out. Leaping over defenders for the touchdown. That made it 14-0 after they got the two-point conversion. And then after a fumble by Great Creek Ballinger on the move again. That's Vaughn finding Braden Bowman down the middle for a touchdown. 21-zip Ballinger. And this one would go all Bearcats. They shut out Great Creek tonight. 41 to 0. So let's take a look at those 2 3A Division 2 standings. It's the Bearcats and Bangs Dragons setting at the top right now. Bangs blew out Ingram Moore tonight, 47 to 15. Sonora sitting there at 2 and 0 after starting the season winless, now riding a three game winning streak, while Brady still looking for that first district win. And big one in that district next week. Sonora and Bangs playing each other, so a little bit of a jostling room there at the top. Most people are thinking that oh, it's Bangs and Ballinger that'll probably ultimately decide that district title, but hey, let's see if Sonora can do something about that next week. And coming up here on Inside the Game, we'll head into District 14, 2A Division 2. Miles hosted at Junction, while El Dorado went on the road to take on Rock Springs. Highlights and scores from across 2A next.
If you or a loved one has mesothelioma or any other asbestos-related cancer, call now. Asbestos manufacturers sold deadly asbestos materials to thousands of companies, putting workers at risk. An estimated $30 billion in court-ordered trusts have been set aside to pay out claims to asbestos victims. You may be entitled to a portion of these funds and receive compensation without filing a lawsuit or ever going to court. For your free legal consultation, call 800-785-1242 now. That's 800-785-1242. I am a paid non-attorney spokesperson. Hi, I'm Mike with MGB, Mike's Gold Buyers. Gold and silver prices are terrific, which means more money for your gold, silver, and diamonds. Come to MGB and you'll say, I sold gold and I like Mike. On Avenue in by Angelo State. Golden Chick now has Fletcher's Corny Dogs. I like being at the fair. Hand-dipped and golden brown. Nice corny dog. That's delicious. <laughs> Crunchy, fresh, bring back so many memories. Golden Chick. Y'all don't judge me. This is too good. At Kaiser Flooring Center, we pride ourselves in providing exceptional customer service and a wide variety of flooring options. So for floors you love and service you expect, come to Kaiser Flooring Center, your Concho Valley flooring experts. Bowles Heating and Cooling is your Concho Valley leader for honest and reliable heating and cooling services. That's why they're proud to sponsor honest and reliable leaders like the hosts of the Concho Valley homepage News Connection. Catch News Connection every weekday at 6 and 10 p.m. Stay safe and keep downtown strong. Coming into this season, the general consensus was that District 14 2A Division II title would come down to next week's El Dorado and Cristobal matchup for a second straight season. But Rock Springs has joined the fold at the top, proving themselves to after keeping pace with Cristobal last week. Meanwhile, at the bottom of the district, Menard is still winless, leaving Junction and Miles potentially battling tonight for the fourth and final playoff spot. And that's where we will start. Junction is riding a two-game winning streak, looking to keep that going. They're five and two on the year, and late in the first quarter, no score. Junction's chance Condarco is picked off by Carson Ellison, but that return eventually the drive would stall out for the Bulldogs. So Junction catches a bit of a break there. We'll go to the second quarter, still scoreless. Miles on the move. That's Dylan Garza who takes the pitch. He's taken down by a host of Eagles, but he fumbles, and Colton House scoops it up. And look at that, folks. Defense scoring points. And Junction is on the board first. They lead 7-0. to zero. Here, they're trying to punch in another one before halftime. It's Colton House again. This guy's been Mr. Texas football twice or been nominated twice. You can see why. Another touchdown for him on the long run. They made it 13-0 Junction. And the Eagles get an important win tonight, 33-6. Let's see how the number eight Cristobal Cougars did tonight. The t number one team in the district right now hosting Menard. Braden Wilcox and the Cougars on the move right here. And look at that. The screen pass to Apian Salinas. And he is in for six. Cougars up 7-0. Next Cougar possession trying to add it. Fourth down. But Menard's defense breaks through the drags down of Wilcox behind the line of scrimmage. But you can't keep this offense out of the end zone too long. Wilcox to Josh Faba on the handoff. And Faba fights in for seven more. 14-0 Cougars. And then Wilcox just showing off now in the second quarter. Had a busted play. Just going and breaking tackles. Making people miss one after another. And scores 20-0 Cougars at that point. And they're going to dominate this one 66 to zero. And then two of the teams I mentioned to start things off right at the top right now, El Dorado and Rock Springs. This one was close going into the half, but the Eagles adjusted, dominated the second half for a 35 to 12 win. And now taking a look at the district standings for 14 2A. Cristobal sitting there at 2 0 and El Dorado at 2 0. So that all important next week's matchup 
between those two schools likely could decide the district title again. But hey, Junction's right in the fold, and while there's still three games left in this district, anything can happen. But hey, the fans are getting what they want because this rivalry has turned into something in recent years. Now let's move over to 14 at 2A Division I. Ozona hosting Brackettville. First quarter, Jesse Vega back to pass. He finds Logan Fay across the middle, and he beats everyone in the end zone for a touchdown. First one of the game, and they're out to a 7-0 lead. And they kept roaring. This time, Vega keeps it, and he's just faster than everyone on the field. Pure athleticism from him, finding room, and no one's going to catch him. Ozona is going to cruise, too, to an easy win over Brackettville. 40 to 0, the Lions improved to 5 and 2 and 2 and 0 in district. And then checking in on the Mason Punchers, they got another big win tonight, their third in a row, starting district with a 3 and 0 record, 55 to 6 over Johnson City and we'll take a look at the district standings for that one as well. Sitting there right at the top like many expected are the Punchers and the Lions and that matchup could end up deciding the fate of this district because everyone else Kind of looks like they're on the downside right now. Hey, we going or we're about to get into the world of six-man football and check in on the Coke County rivalry between Bront and Robert Lee. We'll also look at Water Valley hosting Very Best and Erie County. They're looking to bounce back after their loss last week. Highlights when we come back. But first, let's take a look at this week's Bulls fan cam. Catering for Inside the Game is provided by Chick-fil-A. Take the Dr. Pepper High School Football Challenge. Each week, go to ContraValleyHomePage.com and test your high school football knowledge. One lucky winner could receive a $25 gift card. Go to ContraValleyHomePage.com and take the Dr. Pepper High School Football Challenge today. In Texas, whether it's work or play, Ford trucks lead the way with premium features that make the Ford F-Series America's best-selling truck for 43 years and the best-selling truck in Texas. Upgrade to a new F-Series today at your Texas Ford dealer. Drive home a new F-150 with over 11,000 total savings. Ford F-Series, built for Texas, built for you. Here's a word from another KSAN preferred partner. Experience, service, and satisfaction. Deerski and Deerski Realtors can answer any real estate questions you may have. Whether it's buying or selling property, Deerski and Deerski has the answers. Imagine being free, free from the pain normal exercise can cause. Introducing the Teeter Free Step, featuring patented stride technology licensed from commercial high-end physical therapy equipment. Free Step is the only home use stepper with this unique gentle linear motion, delivering the best in low impact exercise. It's almost like the machines that I had at physical therapy. The Free Step has been a lifesaver for me. It really has. 93% of users surveyed reported the Free Step was easier on their knees and back than other cardio options. I've tried the elliptical, I've tried the stationary bike. The free step answered so many of the issues that I had. I can get a full body workout and not be in pain while I'm doing it. The free step engages both the upper and lower body, boosting calorie burn by more than 17% and distributing muscle exertion so your workout feels easier. Instead of sitting in my favorite chair, now I'm sitting on free step. I can watch TV, I'm moving my legs, I'm moving my arms. Before I know it, the show's over and I just got a great workout without even thinking about it. Call or go to tryfreestep.com to learn more. Welcome back. The Coke County rivalry between Braun and Robert Lee dates back to 1927. And this season, for the 103rd time, they met to play some football. Let's jump right into this one because, man, was it a good football game. Late in the first quarter, Braun up 20-6. to six. Robert Lee looking to get back into it. And that's the guy to do so. Ivan Escamilla in that, to the end zone, as I've said several times tonight, for the Robert Lee touchdown. They're down just 20-14 to 14 now. After the extra point, second quarter, Bront trying to at least do something after that botched snap, and they do. 
touchdown here from Jet Jackson, and that gives Bront the lead. Now, let's go to the fourth quarter, or the second quarter. Still right before halftime, a two-point conversion play after a kick by Escamilla is taken back to the end zone. The Steers led 29 to 28 going into the break. And this one ended up being back and forth throughout the night. And Robert Lee gets a one-point win, 43-42. to Homecoming for the Wilder Valley Wildcats, looking to make it three straight wins. Very best, ho hoping to snap a three-game losing skid. First possession for Water Valley. Harley Davis cuts it back, and this is a long touchdown run for him. Touchdown, as I said, Water Valley up 6-0. The Wildcat loving it, and this game was all Wildcats. Next possession, Davis again going left, and he breaks free. No one even close to him for another Water Valley touchdown. Man, this Wildcats team looking really good. We're still in the first quarter, and hey, why not just give it to Davis every play? Because this guy is just carrying them into the end zone. 20 zip at that point. Water Valley picks up its third straight win, 63-6. to is your final. Erie County hosting Paint Rock. Hornets hoping to bounce back after last week's loss to Water Valley. First Hornet, Hornets on the attack. Trevin Cofill surveys the field and just decides to take off and tuck it in for the touchdown. Erie County up 16 zip. Second quarter, Paint Rock gets on the board. That's Sal Fuentes connecting to Jorge Garcia for the touchdown. Still Hornets up by a lot, 26. And they would add to it. Ensuing kickoff, that's Kofel again. Fields the onside kick, finds a seam, 45 yards to the house. And Erie County cruises to a win. They bounce back 56 to 6. And we'll take a quick look at the district standings. Water Valley sitting at the top. Eden was on a bye this week, so they stay at 1 0. Erie County, 1 1. Next week, we have several big games on the docket, so make sure you tune in. Until then, we'll see you next week. Inside the Game is sponsored by Mitchell Automotive Group.